rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine and give God your glory, glory, rise and shine. Give God your glory, glory, glory to the Lord. What's going on? It's your favorite cousin, Big Cuz, Big Cuz Live. This is our wake up call, most slept on radio morning broadcast. It's Tuesday. I'm feeling tall. The current weather is, uh, looks pretty crappy out there. It's like raining and probably cold. So, you know, I'm, everyone getting out to work today, you know, you know, the girls going to have their rubber boots on and all that stuff. So it's one of those type of days. But today we talking a little bit of Irish history, a little boxing history. Uh, shout out all my boxing fans. Shout out my cousins. Uh, I got some cousins that are like big into boxing, so I hope they enjoy this one. Uh, we're going back about John L. Sullivan, uh, one of the first, the first of the modern day boxing. He kind of took boxing out of the uh, bare knuckle era, which was uh, what was that called London Prize Rules into the Queensberry Rules, which they use gloves. So if you didn't know back in the day, they used to really go toe to toe, which is what they called it, toe to toe. Uh, it's an Irish style where you just be right up on each other, just boxing. That's why they got that, that whatever. I don't know. They're right on each other. They're not moving around the ring. They're just going right up at you. So, yeah, bare knuckle boxing. And then uh, this guy, John Sullivan, let's talk about him real quick. So he was born a uh, poor Irish immigrants, came over from the uh, potato famine and all that, and uh, grew up Boston, tough, uh, tough tough environment and he was just a rowdy teenager you know what i'm saying like just a rowdy boy he'd be in the bars early like 15 17 drinking fighting just knocking people out and he wasn't that tall like i'm i'm about 5 10 on a good day he's about 5 10 200 pounds so he wasn't like a huge guy but he 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 could just hit you he could definitely hit you and then he was definitely known for taking a punch now back in the day the bare knuckle fighting was illegal so, you know, we're going to get into that real quick. So at 19 or whatever, some uh, local professional fighter came to his John Sullivan's bar and was like, yo, knuckle up. I'll fight anybody in this bar. And John Sullivan's like, yo, I got this. And he knocked he knocked this uh, this pro out. So now now John Sullivan's on the stage as like the guy that knocked out like this pretty legit fighter. So. He does a couple years of fighting, and then he goes on and he fights like a, a legitimate guy. You know, just happens to be another Mick, but with a super Mick name like Patty Ryan. Come on now, Patty Ryan, really? So now he's the champ. You know, he bossed up. So he went from in the bar, yo, know, and this is something they always they also used to do back. And they used to throw whole kegs. So he was a really good whole keg thrower. So he took like a whole keg of beer. And toss it like that's what they did back then. They didn't have video games or cell phones. They just throw kegs. So now, now John Sullivan, you know, after like fighting in the bars or whatever, whatever, he bossed up, and now, now he is the champ. Now he's all right. He he's just fighting everybody in the area. Like all right, so he solidified his spot. He's like, no one really can beat John Sullivan. He's like, you know what? We're taking this show on the road. So he he put an open challenge to pretty much the whole country. Like he called out the whole country and was like, I'll fight anybody anywhere. I'll lick anybody in the bar. So he pretty much ran all around the country on trains, buses. They didn't have planes back then. You know what I'm saying? I don't even know if they had buses back then. You know, they're probably on the back of a horse or a cart or something. So we're talking like, uh, we're talking pre- uh, 1900s, uh, 1880s and such like that, you know, 20, you know, a couple years, but so he would go around, he offered a thousand dollars for anybody that could not beat him, but just last four rounds. Like if you could last four rounds in the ring with John Sullivan, like you were that bull and you're going to get a thousand dollars, but nobody got it. Now you got to think a thousand dollars and they would put this call out to the whole town. Like, Amer you know, back in the day, there were a lot of immigrants over here that were poor and hungry and willing to scrap and fight for that. So people would show up to his events like, yo, a thousand dollars, like people don't get a thousand dollars in a whole year. So that's like a whole year's salary. So people were lined up to catch these hands. 
these hands from John Sullivan. People were lined up to catch these hands. So he came up with that term. You know, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Because as a five ten guy, there's definitely guys taller than you. Like there, there's like, come on, man, five ten isn't that tall. But he, he he was like stocky boy. He was like built like a little brick. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he could take a hit. So. So, so he he's touring the whole country. You know what I'm saying? He, he he nobody beat him. So he did this for a while. He stacked up mad paper. He was like a huge huge celebrity. Um, oh, let me go back real quick to the rounds. The rounds would last four rounds. So a, a round wasn't like time, like a minute round. It was it was basically till somebody got knocked down real quick, and they're like, all right, you need a quick round break. So that's pretty much what that was. So. He built up his celebrity going around beating people up all over the country. And then he was also friends with like, he got a friendship with like President Teddy Roosevelt. So he was, you know, as an Irish immigrant in the White House with Teddy Roosevelt, you know, that was, that was kind of a big deal. Also friends with Buffalo Bill. You got to look who Buffalo Bill is. Um, but he pretty much was like the first legitimate sports icon. Um, and in a time there really wasn't, you know, there wasn't TV. So it was all like newspapers and radio. And you just heard about, you know, John Sullivan, like his legend grew, uh, pretty much cause he just went around and just beat everybody up, you know, as an Irishman, it, it wasn't like the best for our stereotype as, as a fighting drunk Irishman. Cause he would drink, he would definitely get it in like whole handles of Jameson, just going, going ham baloney, baloney turkey. So, and his, uh, his celebrity grew. So even like other, uh, boxes of other races would change the last name to an Irish last name thinking like that's what to do. So he definitely was influential. Um, his, he, he kind of peaked, you know, taking all them hits, you know, he kind of peaked, but he, he ended, he ended fighting, um, with the gloves on after like he kind of ushered in the whole glove ever and kind of, Push, not, they didn't push out totally, but they pushed out the bare knuckle. But because the bare knuckle was illegal, he actually was. He actually did a fight on a barge in the Hudson River just to uh, just to avoid the police because he wanted to do a fight. And uh, I don't know if you ever seen uh, Kings in New York. They they probably ripped that off, or you know, that was I guess that's something they did was fight on uh, fight on boats out there. But his last fight was epic, seventy five rounds. Like they used to fight for like three hours. Like that's a long time. That's a long time to be fighting. And seventy five rounds. Like you watch a twelve round fight or an eighteen round fight today. It's like come on. Like like is somebody gonna somebody gonna get knocked out or what? Like this thing's going. This thing's going a long time. So at the end of his career, like he built up a reputation as a drinker. As a user, he had a lot of money. He'd be in the bar showing off, throwing money up in the air, buy, buying the bar out. Um, he, he once punched out, got arrested for knocking out his horse. He punched and knocked out a horse. Uh, he, he, had, he was famously known for saying he would never fight a black fighter. But then at the, after, his, um, after his boxing career, he, he has a, there's a famous photo of him shaking the hand of the next generation of boxing icon Jack Johnson if you don't know what Jack Johnson is uh Jack Johnson was that bull too so that's pretty much it just wanted to give you a little quick history about uh John L Sullivan uh famous saying back in the day was I want to shake the hand of the man that shook the hand of uh John Johnson so like you know people were like you were a celebrity even if you got yeah, top of the morning, lad. You were a celebrity just for meeting John Johnson. Like, oh, you met John Johnson? Let me shake your hand. You that bull. So he probably, you know, if you probably got free beers that night at the saloon. Definitely something to think about. Uh, first first icon for uh, sports and boxing. Took him out of the bare knuckle era. Brought him into the glove there. Now, the one reason he wanted to use, he, he wanted to use gloves was because they would fight you know, they would be throwing people on the ground, like grabbing them, poking their eyes out, doing a and then, uh, and, uh, pulling hair, like it was just dirty fighting. So like they cut out all the dirty fighting. That's why they put the gloves on. Um, and then that also helped legitimize the sport that also helped bring it legal. So this is my wake up call. This is your wake up call.
Wake up, see it at night, tall table talk. We tall talking at the tall table with tall cans with teeth on a Tuesday. Hope you got some tall topics, tall opinions and all that. All right, yo, peace.